How you doing guys? I'm going to walk you through the process of checking the oil clearances on your Honda engines. Now this would work for any car engine, but we're using a Honda F23A engine. Um, when it comes to the plastic gauge we're going to use, we've got two options here. There's actually three options, but the red, which is made for bigger distances, bigger gaps. Um, two thousandths to six thousandths if you like inches, um, 0.05 to 0.15 millimeters if you like metric. Uh, we're actually going to be using the green ones because we need to measure um, in between this this clearance. Uh, this would be between one thousandths and three thousandths or 0.025 to 0.075 millimeters. And I'll show you why we need to use this one. When we take a look at our spec sheet uh, for our rod bearing clearances, if we look right here, um, 0 0.021 to 0 0.049 is what it should be. And if it hits 0 0.060, um, it is too big of a gap, too big of a clearance. So this falls right in the middle of what that green plastic gauge can do for us. So now next part. We're gonna work on the number four cylinder here. Uh, front of the engine is off on this side. Um, we're gonna grab our number four piston. It has a number four stamped on both the connecting rod cap and the connecting rod. We're also going to make sure that our piston faces the right direction. Right here, probably a little difficult to see, is an arrow pointing to the front of the engine. The front of the engine being over here, so we're going to make sure we orient our piston the correct way. Take the cap off, make sure there is no oil, dust, dirt, anything like that in here. Same thing with the journal and the crankshaft. Nice and clean. Going to take our piston and set that into place here. And this is the plastic gauge. Inside of here is a little string, a little wax string that we're going to take out and that's what we need to use. Now what's going to happen is as we press this into place, it's going to smush and deform and we'll measure how wide this piece gets. And I need to make sure my number four is stamped on the top. Here we go. Going to take our bolts, thread those in, making sure this does not move. It is key that you do not move that connecting rod. If you move it, you risk smearing the plastic gauge and then it's no longer accurate. So we're going to do this as carefully as we can. Now the torque spec is 14 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. There's 14, 14, and this is the tricky part, doing the 90 degrees. Try to do this without moving that. I know it's not easy to do. We're going to get our ratchet position straight up so we can just go over to 90 degree mark. thing with this one there is 90 degrees now we fully torqued it down now we got to loosen it and take that cap off and see what our plastic gauge did how much did we smoosh it down Now you're going to do this for all four cylinders. When you go to do the middle two, set the piston over on the other side. Now a little trick I'm going to show you. To separate the cap from the connecting rod, thread that in part of the way. Leave it so the screw is still connected. Take a plastic faced hammer, light tap, 
If you hit it too hard, you'll damage that bearing in there. hard to see down here but that is where my plastic gauge is and if we hold this up to that looks like 0 0.038 is the width that we have if I go here it's a little too thin that's definitely way too thick of a green line uh, looking like 0 0.038. Now a little bit better angle is going to be on this one. There we go. That's a lot easier to see. Let's see if we agree. Take my plastic gauge container that it came with. I'm on the millimeter side. If I start on the far right, 0 0.076 my line's definitely way lighter than that we get up to the 0 0.038 that's perfect that lines up exactly right the white line there is equal to the little bit of green plastic gauge up top if I go over to the right yeah it's getting to be a little too wide my green line down here on my packaging is definitely wider than what's on the journal there so it is 0 0.038 millimeters of oil clearance Good close look there. That's what we're comparing. All right. So you're going to clean that off. Uh, a little bit of brake cleaner will do the job. Otherwise, fingernail pretty well scrapes it off too. We'll get that cleaned off before you put it back together. And you're going to continue this for all four of those cylinders, um, checking the clearance with a little bit of plastic gauge. I hope this helps. Um, good luck as you guys go through this.